There are many different ways of making a painting and one useful thing to think about is the idea of problem solving. So when you're starting off, one of the kind of problems that you might have is how do you handle paint? How do you put it on? And it can be really useful if you're dealing with that problem is to think about it in terms of, well, if you're just dealing with something as simple as black and white, then you can be really focusing on how you put paint on the surface of your painting because you're not then worrying about any other factors. So a black and white painting uh, is traditionally called a grisaille, so the Italian for grey. And what we're really considering at this point in time is the idea of the range of tones within the cloudscape. How light or dark are those values? And to some extent, it becomes difficult to judge those relationships initially because tonality is relational. How one tone is read is largely dependent on how all the other tones in the image work together. So one doesn't really know how light or dark this area is over here until one's established the rest. Now this underpainting can be done with acrylic. The advantage of using acrylic is that it dries really quickly. So it enables you to put tones down and if those tones aren't quite right it's easy to modify them. You're also working essentially with the idea of what you've learned from the previous mark. So if you put a mark down and that mark is too dark you can lighten it. If it's too light you can darken it. Of course acrylic dries somewhat darker anyway. That's largely because if you think about it, PVA um, when wet is white. PVA when it dries becomes transparent and what's in acrylic is something a bit like PVA, an acrylic medium. So these tonal values are effectively lighter than you think. Um, it's also really useful to establish your tones against a mid-tone. So one could paint one's board a grey to begin with, or in this instance I'm using a wooden board. So acrylic isn't necessarily detrimental to the board. So it can be a really great way of priming your board, but also preparing your painting. So at the moment I'm trying to work with a large brush, trying to block in the big expanses of cloud. And half closing one's eyes can be useful in terms of trying to see the overview of tone. So you're not really worrying so much at the moment about colour, instead what you're trying to think about is value. Now clearly often what can happen when you start to produce a landscape is that you can become quite seduced by 
the difference between the sky and the land. And invariably you'll find that many people oversee that juxtaposition of tone. Seeing that transition between the sky and the landscape as being too great and you get this very stark line. In fact, as we edge towards the horizon, in this instance, particularly as it was a slightly misty day, that edge is quite a subtle transition. The tonal differences between here is quite slight. I've shifted now from a hog hair brush to a synthetic. And I can start to think now about some of the edges of tone that I'm seeing. So why am I seeing certain areas as being somewhat darker than others? I tend to work with titanium white because it's an opaque white and that means that that allows me to paint over and block out what I've already done. When I'm using a brush I'm trying to think about the brush used in a number of different ways and particularly thinking about how I touch the board to try to get different kinds of mark particularly with clouds when those marks are quite often subdued and subtle and then sometimes can be quite rigid. Because acrylic is so fast drying to create blends of colour from one transition to another is quite challenging unless you use something like a retarder. So it's quite useful to use scumbling where you scrub one colour over the top of another. Of course one can think about the idea that clouds are fundamentally, although vaporous, they're following a kind of solid geometry. So where the light's coming from will illuminate a side, the moment the light's coming in this direction. So this edges of the cloud are receiving light. The faces which are opposite that are darker as the light's coming from above and the base of the clouds is somewhat darker too. You can water acrylic down quite a bit. The only thing you need to be mindful of when you do that is that fundamentally adding too much water will also reduce the adhesion quality of the paint. So you can dilute your colour down with acrylic medium and obviously you can get different kinds of medium, transparent medium, um, opaque medium. Sorry, I should say it again. You can tran you can dilute your colour down with medium. You can get um, quite viscous, quite thick acrylic medium, and you can get quite loose, fluid, transparent medium. You can get matte uh, acrylic medium, and you can get uh, shiny um, gloss acrylic medium. Some of those mediums will also be used for for kind of varnishing purposes as well. So here I'm now trying to sort of think about the structure of the landscape. And obviously we've got rhythms and movements through 
the landscape. At this point in time, one isn't really trying to necessarily exactly replicate what you see. It's much more important to think about the kind of general rhythms and movements. And then you can create marks which have that kind of movement attached to it. Now I'm going to be working back into this painting with oil paint. So what I'm trying to do is effectively solve the great majority of the problems in terms of I've blocked in my board, I've primed the surface of my painting, I've blocked in a lot of the preliminary drawing, I've blocked in the big tones, which then means that what I'm left with is the simple problem then of colour. And grisaille was used in that way. It was an underpainting technique, enabling you to establish the key parts of the painting with your cheapest colours. All the time one is still going back to that same decision. Is this lighter? Is this darker? Of course, if you're working from digital images, as I am in this instance, you could, of course, make a black and white version of your photographic source material, which will help you make value judgments easier. It's usually at this point in time, if I'm working from photographic source material, that I'll now start to enlarge my image. This is when I can start to pick out certain details of what I'm seeing. So unlike drawing and painting the figure, if one puts a field in the wrong place, a tree isn't quite where it should be. No one's going to know. Whereas put an arm in the wrong place and everyone's going to see it immediately. So that does give you a certain amount of freedom in terms of understanding how to construct the landscape. At the moment I've largely been working with the acrylic opaquely but of course by adding more water one can work in as well with more transparent layers. But we're going to utilise the transparent layers when we come back to work in colour. So generally we can think about the idea that we're going to have the greatest amount of contrast 
in the foreground. And as things recede into the background, the contrast is going to be reduced. So there'll be bigger junctions of tonal mark here than back there. If we give that background too much texture, bearing in mind that these clouds are actually over our head, so they're much closer to us maybe than that horizon, then you know if we give everything the same kind of texture, we flatten out the space. So generally, grisaille studies will be somewhat flatter in their appearance than our full colour studies. This is the moment again where I now reduce the photograph down. I'll probably enlarge on a different section. It's that question I think of what am I noticing in the landscape? What am I seeing? What jumps out to me? So I don't have to paint every single tree. But if I notice that that particular bunch of trees are more prominent, then I want to make sure that, that comes through. One of the things that can also be really useful, again remembering about the fact that the colour does dry really quickly, is that if you have created a background and you find that that background is a bit too strong now, that you've lost some of the delicacy of that transition between the sky and the land, then if you dilute your colour down, it's really easy to create a glaze and you can knock back that space. Here I'm just using a kitchen roll to wipe back. Sometimes, you know, blotting off can make interesting incidental marks. So that's my grisaille study of a landscape.